Welcome to Command Lynn. Today, a little something different, uh, taking a break from the lessons and the tutorials and stuff, just to talk about mandolins, like physical uh, mandolins and my mandolin journey, if you will. Uh, I've had a few people recently ask about various, you know, things hanging on the wall in the background. And um, so we're just going to take advantage of a chance here just to show them all at once. And I'll just offer up a few thoughts on each one as we go along. And um, it's been a fun, slightly expensive, as it always is, journey starting from uh, the little knock around that everybody seems to have in the closet somewhere. Grandma's house, you see them at the yard sale for $3. And we'll work our way up to the good stuff here. And um, so, hey, if you feel like geeking out about Mandos, stick around. Let's jump right in. All right, well, like we were saying, my mandolin journey really started with this guy. What is it? A Lotus. Um, this is something my father-in-law got in like the late 70s or something and had given to me and was literally just hanging on the wall uh, untouched for a good decade. I had zero interest in mandolin. I had never touched the thing in my life and I was 44 years old at the time. And this had just been a wall decoration, kind of like here. And I joined a band as a guitar player and uh, they asked me what kind of guitars I had. So I just, you know, I leaned some guitars up against my amp and I took a picture and showed them. And this was hanging on the wall in the background. And they got so excited and were like, dude, you know mandolin? And I was like, of course I know mandolin. Didn't know the first thing about the mandolin. But it was because of this guy in the background that uh, all this got started. And uh, so, of course, like I say, everybody's got probably access to one of these. Let's check it out real fast. All right. Man, let me tell you, tuning this thing up is a terrifying experience. And the top is caving, starting to cave in. So I don't know how many more times this might ever be tuned up. But the point I'm going to make here is, I mean, this thing... <laughs> Certainly no name brand or anything, but they're so seems to be cheap and relatively available. And if you set the thing up, God, these strings are God knows how old, man. But you know what? I mean, it's perfectly it'll, anything that gets the strings under your fingers, so you can get going, right? Having one around uh, made a huge difference that when the urge struck or, you know, the impulse, hey, I need to learn a mandolin, there was one to pick up, go right to YouTube, and mando lessons like everybody else does, and hit the, hit the ground running. But of course, I couldn't play this in the band and I just lied my way into. So we had to uh, right away start upgrading. All right, so I needed a mandolin right away that I could play in a band that had drums and stuff and was going to play at fairly good sized clubs. So I needed to be able to plug in right away. And I didn't have the slightest idea how to play a mandolin and I didn't want to spend a ton of money as anybody who doesn't want to right away. And so I went to my local guitar store and uh, checked this thing out. So literally the first mandolin I came to that was electric my guitar store for about $200 was this Honer uh, electric acoustic. And I played it with this band for a couple months. And uh, I mean, like in my, you know, there's a lot of command and profile picks that I'm playing this. That's in the basement of a club here in Minneapolis. And I played a lot of gigs, uh, or at least a handful of gigs with that as my, you know, as a real Mando. And cause you know, I didn't know any better, but uh, hey, let's check it out. All right, so I had this guy, and I was in the game, right? I was in the band as the guitar slash mandolin player, and we had a gig in 10 days at a club, and I had to get a thing, and I had to learn a bunch of music, and also, like I say, I bought this because it was the first one I found. It's about $220, I want to say, just over $200. I would tune it up and play it for you, but the top is really caving in. And uh, on this one, I suppose I don't dare. But I will tell you about it. I mean, like I say, it put me on the stage with a band playing mandolin music. So I can't say too much bad about it. But man, I tell you, it sure made my life difficult as a beginning mandolin player. 
the D string would stick in that nut so bad, man. It would be just a little bit flat and you would turn and nothing and turn and nothing, turn a little bit more and all of a sudden, <clears throat> you're almost a step sharp. I mean, it was terrible. And I didn't really know what was happening. I mean, I know now that the strings will get stuck in the nut and in the cheek nuts and all that. I had no idea. Uh, but anyway, so I, I was fighting that. It is electric. And uh, so that was handy. Uh, but the E string was half the volume of the other of the other string. So it wasn't exactly the most even sound across the board. Um, and I don't know. Like I said, there seem to be a few, you know, Alvarez, Ibanez. Sometimes I got the little pickup in the middle here. But there seem to be a bunch of these about $200 electric acoustics. And um, I think there are better options, which I'm getting ready to tell you about. But again, hey. I was learning the mandolin. I was on stage, and we were off to the races, right? So can't say too much bad about it. But yeah, I had the little the little Honer electric there, but it didn't take long until I could tell that we need to upgrade. So I moved on. All right. So I knew I was going to have to upgrade almost right off the bat. So um, and that band had ended, and I joined another band as the full time mandolin player because I was hooked at this point. I was done being the guitar player. So I joined another band as a mandolin player and I knew I needed something better than the owner. And what I bought was the one mandolin that I no longer have and I really wish I'd have kept it. But I'll put a picture of it right here. It was the New Yorker, Gretsch New Yorker, it's a G9311. And it was about maybe $50 more than this owner I was just talking about and just on, on a whole separate level uh, for quality. I played, um, you know, it felt like a, a definite step up, even though I didn't really know any better, I could tell. And um, the electronics were a lot better. The, the volume was a lot smoother all the way across the uh, board. I thought, it was, I thought it looked sharp as hell, I gotta be honest. And um, benefit of hindsight, man, that would have made so much of a better beginner starter off if I had skipped the honer, spent 50 more bucks, and got this, uh, got this Gretsch New Yorker, because I played, you know, I started playing more gigs as, like I say, the mandolin player in this band. And I don't have it anymore, but I do have pictures of the thing from old band flyers and stuff. You know, here it is. Like I say, it was pretty sharp, I thought. <laughs> band was the Ditch Pickles. I always said it was a silly name. Uh, but here it is again in, an, in another picture. I really, really liked it, and I wish I'd have kept it. And highly recommend as a nice alternative... Uh, you know, to the to the honer and the other cheap electronic or electric mandolins. Just check out this New Yorker if they still make them. All right, so by then I was hooked and I'm in the band and I'm the mandolin player and I'm just eating the thing up and I'm watching like everybody else does at the stage, right? I'm watching Chris Steely videos all damn night, all the time. And I've convinced myself, I, like everybody else it seems at some point, I've convinced myself that I would like an F style, you know, I want to step up. And I wanted to move up from the $250 uh, Gretsch New Yorker. So as much as I hated to, I traded the thing in as a part of the way that uh, helped me get this next Mando. And I wish I'd have kept it and just saved up a little more. The benefit of hindsight. But I moved on from the Gretsch. And we went and got this guy, my first F-Style, the Lore LM375. And this was, now I felt I was really... I was moving up, right? F style. The thing was north of four hundred dollars, so I was I was sinking some money into it for the first real time, and I got myself a lore. Let's check it out. All right, so I made the big splurge, and I got myself. <laughs> we'll talk about this. I got myself an S style, and well, I guess we'll talk about it right away. I had the K and K twin put in there, and I uh, was off to the races and played another year or two of uh, gigs and band rehearsals and by here by the time i got to this i'd actually i think the youtube channel was up and going and uh gosh the youtube channel maybe it even was going a little before that i forget exactly when it came along but i felt that was really in the game now that i had a lore and of course things have happened i can't play it at the moment because the bridge is god knows where and the nut is God knows where, because once I moved on, uh, kept upgrading as one will do, 
this kind of got left behind. I tried to pull the electronics out and this is not going well. And so the, so the little Laura doesn't see a lot of daylight these days. It just leans up in the floor of the closet. I always thought it'd be a cool video to take the back off this thing and explore the inside because uh, I'm probably not going to play it much anymore or I could put a little time into restoring it. But hey, I think, I'm digressing here, I think Laura's are a good thing for the buck and especially now that Eastman and Kentucky prices have gone, you know, north of 500 bucks to get in the game. Laura's probably your best bet, you know, as an entry level. You know, the Honey Creek uh, stuff that you get at Guitar Center is not bad. Uh, 300 bucks will get you uh, the A style, I think. Maybe a little more for the F. Um, I've played the things at the Guitar Center and I thought maybe it was even a little brighter, kind of livelier sounding. Than... This guy started to sound just kind of muddy and dull to my ear over the years. You know, you kind of, you know, I want to say get more refined, but I don't know, your ear learns <laughs> the more you're into the mandolin and you, the more you listen to them and stuff. But hey, I think the lures are great. I got no problem recommending uh, a lure for someone who doesn't want to, you know, south of 500 bucks for the A or the F. And unless you're making a living playing the mandolin, I mean, who cares, right? You're in the game. They, they sound great. They play great. Uh, as somebody has mentioned here, you know, the, the fingerboards are flat. You know, once I got to, into the Eastman's, you get kind of used to the radiuses. But hey, if, if you don't know any better or different, I should say, don't know any different, I mean, it's not like you can't cover the fingerboards yay wide. Anyway, lures, no problem recommending the lures. But as, as I want to do, huh, as one wants to do, I kept upgrading. And uh, here's what we got next. All right, so when it was time to upgrade again, I remembered back to a uh, mandolin I had played at a local guitar shop here, and I had been so blown away by it. And it had always stuck in my mind, and it was the Gretsch Park Avenue. Now, I was already a big fan of the Gretsch mandolins, because like I said, I had that New Yorker before, but I had played this Park Avenue at a guitar shop here in town, and I had just been blown away by the thing by how loud and bassy it was, but it was almost 600 bucks and there was no way. But when I came across one on Craigslist for 250, you better believe I swiped it up and I was super glad I did. Let's check this one out now. All right, so for $250, I had swiped this Gretsch off of Craigslist and I was just blown away at the time. It was, it was a, definitely a whole nother level up from the quality I had before. Now I will play a little bit of it here because there's been very little playing in the video so far, but the thing's intonation is uh, pretty out of whack and it's not really, doesn't settle into its bass like it should, but it's, in general, man, overhauls are so bassy and uh, the bigger sound. first like I say this thing new would have been 600 bucks this was definitely my first I don't know I want to think of it as my first real mandolin and um I wound up I've played more gigs with this guy I think than all my others combined because this was the main guy for a years at the time now i'm looking back at it, man, my my action is raising up a little bit here i need to i've got a guy who did set up some of my other mandos and stuff i really need to take this to him and have him uh, set me up uh, on this guy just i stopped getting with it once i got the eastman's and then i just haven't had him go through it but man i love 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 this uh park avenue and i don't know if they make them anymore it's the top of the line of their roots collection and I don't know, I've always just been such a big Gretsch guy, a big Gretsch fan. He just, you know, I've had a bunch of their guitars. Uh, the big hollow bodies are the ones that just look like the little Les Paul bodies with the trimmos. I had a Gretsch. I was 
playing gigs and I was loving Mando life. And, uh, but man, I tell you what, I'd spent a lot of time here in, on YouTube looking at mandolin videos. And I had always been just smitten, smitten, if you will, by the Eastmans. And they're always in the back of my mind that, man, someday, someday I got to get an Eastman. And, uh, man, I always, you know, just keeping an eye on Craigslist because I can't spend $600 on a band, or at least I certainly didn't then. And uh, when the chance came up to, to swipe an Eastman, man, I jumped right in. Let's check that one out. All right, by then things were rocking. I was in a band as the Mad Ellen player. I was playing a bunch of gigs. I loved my Gretsch. I had a YouTube channel. I was having people tell me from all over the world where they were watching from. By the way, hey, tell me where you're uh, watching from the world so I can put a pin on my map for you. Um, YouTube channel was rocking and was loving life as a mandolin player, but man, in my mind, I always wanted an Eastman. Just kept seeing them. And uh, when the 305 popped up here on Craigslist for, again, $250. Can you believe it? These things are 600 bucks new on the shelf. Got to watch those uh, one ads, <laughs> modern day one ads, if you will. But uh, Craigslist giveth again, and I swiped this sweet uh, 305. Now let's check this one out. And without even playing the thing, man, Eastman's are just stunning to me. Just spectacular. They're like works of art that also happen to play great music. I love the back, the uh, tiger, you know, the flaming. Just, oh, I'm just such a sucker for that. And uh, man, was I thrilled to get my hands on this. All right, so I had myself an Eastman, and I was just over the moon on this thing. And still then, it, what a spectacular sound. So nice and woody. So right away, I bought it a... a LR Bags Radius pickup and began a long series of uh, things that I clamped onto this thing because I had an armrest on here. I you know, put little scratches in all over it. I didn't care. <clears throat> armrest, I clamped on the LR Bags and had it taped in various spots around the neck. I didn't mind the LR Bags. You know, when I played it a handful of uh, times out in public, it's very boomy. You get all the same, which actually sometimes works in our favor because sometimes I would tap on the bridge for like finger snaps in one song and it would go through the piece. It was pretty sweet. Uh, but it's definitely a lot of extraneous sound and you kind of got to be careful with yourself. Uh, I never had any electronics put in it. I did do one mod. If you follow any, you know, the, the 305 at all, what's the one thing everybody, if they complain about anything, which isn't much, it's the tuners. And I was having this, you know, my A string would slip a lot. And it'd be the one the one negative of the thing, you know. They're their uh, lowest price one, so they got to, you know, save money somewhere. And they had the lower price tuner. So I did swap out to some Grovers here, which I think are just slick as hell. I'll put a link, um, I'll link to them down below if you've got a 305 and are interested. Uh, these Grovers sure worked out well. And so that's the one thing I've done. I didn't really play a whole lot of gigs with this one. Like I said, I never put electronics, you know, I never had the K and K put in. And eventually we destroyed the radius. I was, we were trying to snip that wire and make it be shorter and resolder and all, and it didn't go well. And so even to this day, this guy is just a Q-stick. And uh, but man, I love it so much. This would have been like the ultimate beginner starter mandolin. Especially when they used to be 350, 375, but now they're like eh, pushing 600 bucks off the shelf. And man, that's a that's a harder pill to swallow when you're getting going. And but again, I paid 250 for this on Craigslist. You just got to keep an eye out for them. Now I don't know if you can find them that cheap anymore, but you know certainly used as a way to go. Uh, but this. Boy, you couldn't do better than to start with one of these. But nowadays, like I say, I'd probably recommend the Lore, the Honey Creek series. It's still in about that 350 range and will get you in the game. But man, the 305s are just spectacular and I love the thing. So I was in love with the Eastmans. And um, boy, you know what started catching my eye? 
I thought those black tops were just so sharp and sexy. And um, I don't know, just something about it, huh? So, you know, again, in the back of my mind, you know, I've always spent my future money. Started thinking about these guys. Yeah, I started noticing these, and I was just smitten, man. I don't know if there's anything sexier than these black top, black top Eastmans. I know they made the, the gold top version of these in the same way, or the same model. But just something about the black on top of the mahogany just really did it for me. Yeah, just something about those sides and that back. Just love that mahogany on there. And uh, without ever having played one or heard a note, I pretty much decided if the chance ever came up, I was going to have to get one of these things. All right, so my chance came last year, uh, early last year, when I saw one of these on Reverb for, now this is the most expensive, uh, certainly most expensive mandolin I ever bought, but it was just over $700, which, whew, that's a big chunk for me. But new, these things are eleven to $1,200. So I saw my chance last year, and I just happened to be at a time where I could pull the trigger. And without ever having touched it, seen one of these things in real life, or played a note, um, I took the plunge and had them ship this thing to me from a music store from Maryland. And got it home right away, and I hate to say it, I didn't like the E-string. The E-string very, seemed very shrill to me. And um, I was like, oh man, here I've got my dream mandolin, or at least what I'd been picturing as my dream mandolin, but man, that E string just was hitting me like an ice pick. And I started trying to figure out ways to uh, soften up the E string. And man, did I find a good one. If you guys, uh, anybody watches Jerry Rose's channel, Rose's String Works, he's a luthier out of Missouri somewhere. And he's got really fascinating videos where he, you know, fixes instruments and stuff. But he makes these deer antler saddles. And I ordered up a deer antler saddle almost as a last resort to see what I could do to say, wow. Man, the clouds parted and the angels sang. And um, that's really what it took for me to, I don't know, it just, it, what it did for the sound was just amazing to me. I couldn't believe just what that change had done. And uh, man... Now the E string. Love. So now. So once I switched, swapped out the saddle. Man, this thing was coming to life. So I was super excited, and I had him stick, of course, a, a K and K twin in there because I said, "I said this is it. This was going to be my ultimate gigging amp or gigging amp, <laughs> gigging mandolin." And that I had found the one, right? So I got the K and K twin put in, which obviously highly recommend. I mean, it's like industry standard. And I played a handful of gigs, and then my band broke up. So, um, this hasn't been on stage in about a year, and of course I, I use it mostly, I mean it's my main guy still, even down here when I'm doing videos or doing lessons. Um, this might be where my mandolin journey ends for a bit. I mean, I can't picture myself spending north of a thousand dollars for something that, A, I already have a bunch of. And B, it's not like I make my living as a mandolin player. I mean, if I did, I'd be a lot thinner, let's say. Um, so this might be it for me, man. This is my dream mando nowadays. Just that the mahogany is so sexy. I love the black top. I wanted something different than the sunburst that everybody has. Because, you know, I just, I, I do some bluegrass here and there. But I mean, I don't know. I just wanted, I, I feel like I do different stuff. And I wanted a, something that looked different. And man, I just love this thing.
415, the black top. And this is, it's like, like I say, this is where I get off at the Mandolin Station. I think for a good long time, I'm gonna ride with this guy. I don't need a $3,000 Weber or a something for a good long time. I mean, this, this is the one I was looking for. But of course, I've spent God knows how much money on $200 ones, $300 ones, a $400 one. You know, as I worked my way up into it. So I'm not the smartest way to go, but I'm sure I am uh, happy where I've landed. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you've actually made it this far, God bless you. Um, but uh, thanks for tuning in on my trip down Mandolin Memory Lanes. And uh, again, I've just been asked recently several times about different Mandos, and I thought, just show them all so uh, hey hope you found it semi-interesting or hurt entertaining and we'll get back at the lessons and stuff next time as always hey thanks so much and uh, we'll see you next time